During the alternate Second World War between the Allies and Soviet Union, both sides created a variety of unique and advanced weapon systems, vying for a technological edge that could shift the war in their favor. The Allies employed the services of the leading scientific mind of the time, Professor Einstein. The Soviets, on the other hand, took a keen interest in the works of Nikola Tesla, and sought to further develop the late scientists' inventions for their own use. In this way, the Second World War wasn't just a war of ideologies, but a war between the brilliant minds of Einstein and Tesla. For the Soviet Union, no weapon better demonstrated the ultimate power of Tesla than the most fearful defensive structure in their arsenal, the Tesla Coil. This tall tower was an intimidating sight along the perimeter of Soviet bases. The transformer, capacitors, and spark gap for the tower were kept underground. The primary coil was the widest one, and the closest to the base of the tower. Secondary coils brought the generated electrical charge up to the top load, represented by the sphere at the top of the tower. The bolt of lightning generated from this process would then shoot out from the top load, directly towards any nearby enemy units. The last thing many allied units would hear before their demise was the unique sound of the Tesla coil as it charged up. Infantry units struck by the bolt from the coil would be instantly turned to ash, while light vehicles and medium tanks would be reduced to molten steel in a matter of seconds. As powerful as it was, the Tesla coil did have a few notable weaknesses. The first was that it required a lot of power to function, so if a Soviet base didn't have enough power, then its Tesla coils would not function. The Tesla coil could only strike one unit at a time. After its initial attack, it took time for the tower to charge up for a follow-up attack. The recharge time was typically based off which enemy unit the Tesla coil was targeting. Eliminating a tank required a greater charge than eliminating an infantryman, and the greater the needed charge, the longer it took for the tower to regenerate. In addition, the Tesla coil could not be used against aircraft, and it would not take long for the tower to be brought down with enough concentrated fire from enemy forces. This weakness could be mitigated by building the testicle behind a concrete wall, and constructing SAMs near the towers to defend them from aircraft. The Tesla coil proved to be such a formidable defense weapon that Soviet commanders sought a way to use it for offensive purposes. Soviet scientists and engineers created a mobile prototype called the Tesla tank. The initial prototypes of the Tesla tank were based off captured half-tracks that the Allies used as mobile radar jammers. The Tesla tank itself could jam local radar too, but unlike the original Allied vehicles, this one packed an electrifying punch. While lightly armored, the Tesla tank had substantial range, with its electrical bolt being discharged from the spherical load on top of the vehicle. The Tesla tank's attack was effective against both units and even structures. Like the original defense structure, the tank was useless against aircraft, but did not have to worry about being inactive due to low power. One of the more notable uses of the Tesla tank was during the events of the Counter-Strike Soviet campaign. In Ukraine, Soviet intelligence learned that the Allies were experimenting with their own MiG aircraft, created from captured design documents of the Soviets' own. More importantly, this Allied MiG was capable of carrying a nuclear payload, and thus had to be destroyed. Soviet Field Commander S-7 was ordered to carry out this mission, he was issued a group of irreplaceable Tesla tank prototypes to aid in this endeavor. The Tesla tanks first eliminated a pro-Allied civilian village before moving on to destroy the main Allied base just south of this village. After this base's destruction, the Soviet commander learned that the MiG was being kept on a nearby island. Using his surviving Tesla tanks, he raided a smaller Allied base nearby, capturing its naval yard. Transport ships from the naval yard were then used to bring the Tesla tanks and supporting Soviet forces to the island, destroying the MiG and any remaining Allied forces. As the war progressed, the Soviets continued to make advancements in their Tesla-derived weapon systems. So much so, that they were able to further downsize the technology into a portable generator, one that could be worn on a soldier's back. The soldiers that carried these downsized Tesla weapons were called shock troopers. 
Shock troopers stood out from other Soviet infantry thanks to their red uniforms and the yellow Tesla coil gun attached to the generator on the trooper's back. The troopers looked very similar to flamethrower infantry. They also wore a gas mask and a Stahlhelm, which is strange considering the Stahlhelm is a German helmet. It should be noted, however, that this visual look to the Shock Trooper is from the Remastered Collection. In the original Red Alert game, the Shock Trooper cameo wore a uniform that was similar to other Soviet infantry, and the Tesla weapon they carried looked more like a cattle prod than a gun. While expensive to train, Shock Troopers were some of the Soviets' toughest infantrymen. Using their Tesla weapons, they could deliver powerful jolts of electricity to instantly kill enemy infantry units. A full squad of shock troopers could even do substantial damage to vehicles and buildings. Of course, as with the Tesla coils and tanks, the shock trooper's weapon would take a few seconds to recharge after an attack. This downtime was when the trooper was most vulnerable. The shock trooper was also one of the slowest moving infantry units due to the heavy equipment they carried. The most noticeable use of shock troopers came during the Soviet campaign of the Aftermath expansion. This conflict occurred in Spain, where a small border town had been voicing support for the Allied cause. No longer considered Soviets, a team of Stalin's elite shock troopers were sent to wipe out the village. As the shock troopers made their way across the region, they discovered the Allies had established a couple of military bases in the area, which proved that the civilians fully supported the Allied cause. Regardless, the shock troopers, with the help of Soviet reinforcements, successfully destroyed the village and the nearby allied bases. Despite the strength of their Tesla technology, the Soviet Union were ultimately defeated by the Allies. However, the Union would not be disbanded in the aftermath of the war. Instead, one Alexander Romanov would be put into power. Romanov was a career politician, who openly stated that he wished the Soviet Union to be a peaceful and benevolent country. Secretly, however, he held a grudge against the Allies for the destruction they wrought to his beloved motherland. Taking advantage of the Allies' complacency, he rebuilt the Soviet military and launched an all-out assault against the United States, setting off the Third World War. While the rebuilding of the Soviet military included the development of new weapon systems, Soviet scientists and engineers made improvements to their already existing Tesla technology with the newest of these being the Tesla Reactor. The Tesla Reactor provided power to Soviet bases, replacing the coal-fired ones used in the previous war. The structure stood out from all other buildings due to the electrically charged metal sphere located in the middle of it. It was vital for Soviet commanders to protect these reactors, for the more damage they sustained, the lower their power output would be. Commanders also had to be on the lookout for Allied spies, who could infiltrate the Tesla reactors and shut them down for several seconds, leaving the Soviet base without power. Lacking sufficient power, the new Tesla coils would be unable to protect the base. The Tesla coils of the Third World War looked basically the same as their Second World counterparts. They did seem to be a little shorter, which would account for the shorter range of the new coils. However, they were no less lethal, able to instantly reduce enemy infantry to ash, and destroy vehicles with only one or two bolts of electricity. The Third War Tesla coils had one key feature that their predecessors lacked. They could be charged by Tesla troopers to increase the range and power of the coil. The Tesla troopers were the next evolution of the Soviet military shock troopers. These troopers could surround a Tesla coil and contribute their power to charging the defense structure. The more troopers that surrounded the coil, the greater the charge. Even better was that a couple of Tesla troopers could provide power to an offline Tesla coil. Such a capability was vital if a Soviet commander found their base short on power and needed to bring their Tesla coils online quickly to defend against attackers. One knew when a Tesla coil was offline due to the lack of electrical bolts searching from the tower in its idle state. As for the Tesla troopers themselves, they wore a heavy armored suit made of steel and rubber. Rubber shoes in motion! The upper body was where the trooper was most protected. Their steel helmet and breastplate made the troopers more resilient to light arms weapons, as well as making them almost immune to the crushing power of enemy vehicles. Some troopers also seemed to utilize a rebreather beneath their helmet. 
Attached to the trooper's right arm was the primary weapon, a portable Tesla coil, or more specifically, a Tesla gauntlet. Using this gauntlet, the Tesla trooper could fry any infantrymen with ease and do noticeable damage to vehicles, making Tesla troopers an impressive anti-armor unit. The gauntlet did take a few seconds to recharge between attacks, which was when the Tesla trooper was most vulnerable, though ideally their heavy armor would keep them alive. Many Tesla troopers also carried a sidearm, held in a holster strapped to their right leg. If a trooper's primary weapon malfunctioned, or was rendered inoperable due to damage, they could fall back to this sidearm. While quite formidable in combat, the range of the Tesla trooper's weapon was short, so they would have to close the distance of their target for maximum effectiveness. Like other Tesla weapon systems, the Tesla trooper was highly vulnerable to air units, especially the Allied Rocketeers. Elite veteran Tesla troopers had a strong understanding of their gauntlets, able to calibrate them to fire faster. They could even cause a bolt of electricity to bounce off their primary target, and hit up to two additional targets nearby. During the Soviet campaign of the Third World War, a strike force was tasked with infiltrating the French capital of Paris to encourage the nation not to support the U.S. in its war against the Soviets. The Soviet strike force included a couple squads of Tesla troopers who were tasked with using their weapons to turn the Paris Tower into a giant supercharged Tesla coil. With support from other units, the Tesla troopers were able to reach the tower and achieve their goal with the electrified Paris Tower quickly destroying all French military units and structures within its vicinity. Unit lost. The new Russian Tesla tank also saw action during the Third World War, but in a more limited capacity compared to its Second War predecessor. Prepare for rolling blackout. The new Tesla tank was an actual tank this time, fully utilizing tank treads, unlike the previous vehicle, which was a half-track. The single electrified dome of the previous vehicle was replaced with a rotating turret that had dual Tesla coils as its weapons. While many nations were part of the Soviet Union, only the Russians made use of the Tesla tanks. The new Tesla tank was effective at taking out armored vehicles, Though the tank's range was noticeably shorter compared to its predecessor, its improved Tesla weapons did have a faster rate of fire. Just like elite-ranked Tesla troopers, the electric bolt of an elite Tesla tank's weapon could bounce off the primary target to strike additional enemies nearby. The tank was lightly armored and could be quickly taken out by defensive structures, such as the Allies' Prism Tower. To end the war, the Allies made a direct assault on Moscow to capture Premier Romanov. They chronosphered a strike force directly into the city and established a foothold. The Allies first needed to eliminate Russian military forces within the city. These forces utilized Tesla tanks to defend their bases and assault the Allied one. After defeating these standard Russian forces, the Allies then had to contend with the Premier's elite Black Guard. The Black Guard had their own Tesla coil built next to the Kremlin, though the weapon still drew power from the surrounding reactors. So, if these reactors were destroyed, the Black Guard's Tesla coil would be effectively useless. If the Soviets had captured Einstein's time machine and used it to travel back in time to stop the traitorous Yuri, they would have helped to free Allied forces in London from Yuri's mind control. As thanks, the Allies pledged to help the Soviets defeat Yuri, and the Soviet commander utilized the Allies' war factory to construct Tesla tanks. These tanks would aid in destroying the psychic dominator in the city. Of course, the Soviets were unable to capture Einstein's time machine. Instead, the Allies used it to travel back in time and stop Yuri themselves, preventing the psychic dominator disaster from occurring. Shortly after the timelines merged, the Soviet Union and Allies once again ended up in conflict with each other. With the Allies on the verge of winning this new conflict, Soviet Colonel Anatoly Cherdenko ordered their top scientist, Gregor Zelensky, to activate his time machine and take them back far enough to eliminate Einstein, thereby depriving the Allies of their technological advantage. This plan worked, 
However, in altering the past, the Soviets inadvertently created the Empire of the Rising Sun, a third power that sought to bring the Allies and Soviets to their knees using its own advanced technology. In this new iteration of the Third World War, the Soviets gained access to new weapon systems, while others stayed the same, including their arsenal of Tesla weapons. The Tesla coil was still the Soviet Union's best defensive structure. The design remained largely the same, except the coil sat atop a cylindrical pedestal made of red brick. The weapon still had a slow charge-up time, but its bolt of electricity could instantly eliminate infantry or light vehicles, and do considerable damage to heavier armored vehicles. More importantly, the Tesla coil was now more effective against naval vessels, as it could be constructed on water to protect bases at sea. Tesla coils could still be supercharged by nearby Tesla troopers, but they could also be charged by Tesla tanks and the new naval boat called the Stingray. In addition, if there was a lack of power plants at a Soviet base, these units could provide power to the Tesla coil using their own portable generators. While they performed the same role as heavy shock infantry, the new Tesla troopers were fully encased inside metallic armor. Here's your electric bill. These elite mechanized patriots of the Soviet Union were armed with dual Tesla cannons, highly effective against ground units and base structures. In addition to their hand cannons, the Tesla troopers were equipped with electromagnetic disruptors. When activated, these disruptors would send a continuous surge of electromagnetic energy in a wide radius outward from the trooper. Any vehicles caught within this surge were completely disabled, unable to move or use their own weapons. However, in order to maintain this disruption, the Tesla trooper himself was rendered immobile. Shutting off the magnetic disruptors allowed the Tesla trooper to move once again, able to use his suit's own internal power. Of course, any vehicles disabled by the field would be brought back online. Ideally, a Tesla trooper would engage the disruptors to disable nearby enemy vehicles, giving supporting Soviet forces time to destroy them. While the Tesla trooper could withstand damage from most vehicles, large ones such as the mobile construction vehicle or the Empire's King Oni Battle Walker were fully capable of crushing the troopers. Tesla troopers were also vulnerable to the Empire's Shinobi warriors, whose shuriken seemed especially effective at piercing the troopers' armor and bringing them down quickly. The newest of the Soviets' Tesla-derived weapon systems that saw extensive use during the alternate Third World War was the Stingray. Batteries fully charged. The Stingray was the Soviet Union's first attempt to create a naval platform using their Tesla technology. This light, fast-moving vessel was originally conceived by a scientist named Roman Grozovitz. Further information regarding Grozovitz and his invention was originally detailed on the official Red Alert 3 website. The Stingray was first invented when the eccentric Moscow-born scientist Roman Grozovitz, responsible for the portable capacitor still used in the Tesla Trooper armored suits, decided to outfit his private speedboat with a pair of Tesla coils in order to enhance his frequent fishing expeditions. The coils, he assumed, would not only be used to effectively hunt the fish, but would simultaneously cook them to a burnt crisp, just as he liked. This whim gradually became an obsession. Grozovitz worked tirelessly to outfit his boat with a rubber-coated, insulated hull and a power supply that was light yet efficient. While the work left him wifeless and rubleless, the Soviet Ministry of Experimental Science took notice and took him under its wing, granting subsidies and providing accommodations for the brave, innovative exploration into the science of lethal electrocution, as the Ministry Weekly Journal reported at the time. Soon enough, the Soviet Union was crafting that which was previously considered impossible, or at least stupid. Fast-moving ships fitted with electrifying weapons that could reduce more than just fish down to their elementary particles. Today, some still consider the late Grozovitz a hero for helping unearth some of the true destructive potential of Nikola Tesla's lifetime of work. Once the Union understood how to create a fast-moving strike ship with insulated hulls and Tesla-based weaponry, the Ministry of Experimental Science excitedly explored various improvements to the original design. The only one that stuck out after all these years are the Stingray's collapsible movers, which resemble the six legs of an insect 
and allow the vessel to move on dry land over rough-hewn terrain, much like the Sickle Security Vehicle. The need for this arose as the Union's enemies realized that the best way to retaliate against Stingray assaults was to fight them from inland, capitalizing on the limited range of the Tesla coil guns, as well as the light armor of these ships. Now that they can move on to shore, the enemies of the Union are no longer safe, even on land. Though the Stingray was capable of engaging enemy forces on land, it wasn't the most effective use of the vehicle due to its slow walking speed. In addition, the Stingray's Tesla Surge ability was unusable while well on land. By amplifying its coil guns to redirect voltage through millions of capacitors in the hull, the Stingray is able to radiate extreme levels of electrical current through surrounding waters. While this briefly short-circuits the vessel, it suffers no lasting harm, unlike anything else nearby. Like all other Tesla weapon systems, the Stingray was vulnerable to aircraft, so it needed MiGs or Bullfrogs to support them against such aerial threats. A more capable vehicle for the Soviets to use in land warfare was, of course, the Tesla tank. I'm wired! Though this iteration of the Tesla tank was stronger than the previous version, it was rarely seen on the battlefield. Like the Tesla troopers, the Tesla tank was equipped with electromagnetic disruptors, which could be used to disable any nearby enemy vehicles, but at the cost of the tank itself being immobile and unable to use its primary coil weapons. Notable uses of the Tesla tank during this iteration of the Third World War can be seen in both the Soviet and Allied campaigns of Red Alert 3. In the Soviet campaign, the Union's top commander made use of a few Tesla tanks to assault Fort Bradley in New York City, crushing the last of the Allies' resistance led by American President Ackerman. The Soviet commander that led this assault originally acquired the Tesla tanks on Easter Island. On Easter Island, the previous Premier of the Union, Anatoly Cherdenko, attempted to use the tanks to eliminate the commander and those loyal to him, as Cherdenko saw them as threats to his own power. In the Allied campaign, the Allies sought to bring down the leadership of the Union by assaulting the heavily fortified city of Leningrad. Tesla tanks were used by the Soviets to defend their Iron Curtain superweapons, which are being used to protect Jernenko's rocket launch facility. The Premier planned to launch himself into space and escape the capitalist Allies forever. Unfortunately for Jernenko, the Allies successfully took down all the Iron Curtains, then destroyed the launch facility and put Jernenko and his associates in a cryo prison. What helped the Allies achieve victory over the Soviet Union and Empire of the Rising Sun was an Amsterdam-based corporation called Future Tech. Future Tech was responsible for the development of some of the Allies' most powerful weapon systems. After the war, the company set up a research base in Murmansk, Russia, using the local civilian populace as experiments to further develop their cryo-weapons. To force Future Tech out of Murmansk, a Soviet commander freed some hammer tanks from local detention camps. One of these hammer tanks was armed with a Tesla coil, acting as the vehicle's secondary weapon. This was thanks to the hammer tank's leech beam, which enabled the tank to acquire a new weapon from friendly or enemy vehicles. A hammer tank could leech a Tesla coil off a Stingray, using it as a secondary weapon. With the help of these units, the future tech facility in Mormonsk was destroyed. While Allied forces were busy trying to suppress uprisings conducted by elements of the Empire and Soviet Union in the aftermath of the war, Future Tech hired a commander to travel across the world, acquiring weapons and technology from each of the three powers. One site the Future Tech commander went to was called Tesla's Castle, located on an island somewhere in southeastern Europe. A temperamental young Soviet general, Moskvin, took control of this old castle, and use it to conduct all kinds of twisted military experiments. The son of a late Soviet experimental technology minister, Moskvin's knowledge and tactics were valuable to Future Tech. Tesla's castle was too close to the Soviet heartland, so the Future Tech commander would receive no air support during this mission. Shortly after making landfall and deploying his MCV, the Future Tech commander had to deal with Tesla troopers attempting to hamper his construction efforts. Afterward, Moskvin continued to send waves of Tesla units to attack the commander's base. The castle complex itself was a maze, 
with squads of Tesla troopers patrolling the pathways between the castle walls. The middle of the castle was where most of Moskvit's infrastructure was located. More Tesla troopers and Tesla tanks defended this courtyard. Most noticeable, though, were the super reactors surrounded by four Tesla coils. If the future tech commander's units focused fire on these reactors, the resulting explosion would destroy the nearby Tesla coils. These assaults would be costly, with heavy casualties involved with bringing these reactors and their defenses down, especially if the commander lacked long-range artillery. The future tech commander could make use of other neutral buildings within the castle grounds, such as hospitals to provide medical aid to infantry, and oil derricks to generate additional funds. Plenty of ore mines were available for the commander to expand to outside his initial base. The future tech commander ultimately defeated Moskvin, destroying all the general's unit production buildings, MCV, and defenses. With this victory, future tech acquired design documents for the Tesla coil, adding this defense structure to their ever-expanding arsenal of Soviet weapon systems. Tesla's castle wasn't the only place the Future Tech Commander encountered the rarely seen Tesla tanks. There was one site in Brazil where a fierce three-way battle between the Empire, Allies, and Soviet Union took place. A battle that saw the latter's infamous sniper, Natasha, shooting pilots out of dozens of vehicles. Many of these vehicles, including Tesla tanks, were left behind after the battle. Soviet Commander Vera was sent to this site to clean up the mess, but one of the Empire's commanders, Takara, arrived to snatch up as many vehicles as she could. Future Tech wanted control of the site for themselves, as it was a treasure trove of forensic evidence. Utilizing the captured Tesla tanks, and other vehicles of various factions' arsenals found on the battlefield, the Future Tech commander successfully defeated Vera's and Takara's forces. Word of the Future Tech commander's victory reached Natasha herself, who offered to lend the commander her services as part of his Soviet forces. It's ironic that the legacy of Tesla would not be one where his inventions and knowledge of electricity paved the way for peaceful applications benefiting all mankind. Instead, it was used to create some of the most feared and devastating weapons in the Soviet Union's arsenal during the Second World War, and the various iterations of the Third World War. If the Soviet Union could rebuild itself, and once again challenge the Allies and the Empire, it would be no surprise to see them once again relying on their Tesla weapons. But what plans does Future Tech have for such technology, given they went out of their way to acquire it from the Soviets? Only time will tell.